Hello and welcome to the Bible with Briscoe 2020. I am your messenger of the Word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. Today we are going to be reading Daniel 1 through 2 and 1 John 4. Father, I just ask for clarity of voice so that the reading of your word will be a blessing to you and for all of those who have tuned in from all around the world. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. And they all said, amen. Daniel's training in Babylon. Daniel 1. In the third year of the reign of Jochiam, king of Judea, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord delivered Jochiam, king of Judea, into his hands, along with some of the articles from the temple of God. These he carried off to the temple of his God in Babylonia, and put in the treasure's house of his God. Then the king ordered Asaphat, Ashpenaz, chief of his court officials, to bring into the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and the nobility, young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified to serve in the king's palace. He, when he was to teach them the language and literature of the Babylonians. The king assigned them a daily amount of food and wine from the king's table. And they were to be trained for three years, and after that they were to enter the king's service. Among those who were chosen were some from Judea, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief officials gave them new names to Daniel, the name Belteshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Michael, or to Mishael, Mishael, and to Azariah, Abednego. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine, and he asked the chief officials to permit for permission to not defile himself this way. Now God had cursed the official to show favor. Now God had caused the official to show favor and compassion to Daniel, but the official told Daniel, "I am afraid of my lord, the king, who has assigned you food." and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, please test your servant for ten days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and treat your servants in accordance with what you see. So he agreed to this and tested them for ten days. At the end of the ten days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So the guard took away their choice foods and the wine they were to drink and gave them vegetables instead. To those four young men, God gave knowledge and understanding of all kinds of literature and learning, and Daniel could understand visions and dreams of all kinds. At the end of the time set by the king to bring them into his service, the chief officials presented them to Nebuchadnezzar. The king talked with them, and he found none equal to Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. So 
they entered the king's service. In every matter of wisdom and understanding about which the king questioned them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his whole kingdom. And Daniel remained there until the first year of King Cyrus. Nebuchadnezzar's Dream Daniel 2 In the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had dreams. His mind was troubled, and he could not sleep. So the king summoned the magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. When they came in and stood before the king, he said to them, I have had a dream that troubles me, and I want to know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king, May the king live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will interpret it. The king replied to the astrologers, This is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me what my dream was and interpret it, I will have no cut in I will have you cut into pieces and your houses turned into piles of rubble. But if you can tell me the dream and explain it, you will receive from my gifts and rewards and great honor. So tell me the dream and interpret it for me. Once more they replied, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will interpret it. Then the king answered, I am certain that you are trying to gain time, because you realize that this is what I have firmly decided. If you do not tell me the dream, there is only one penalty for you. You have conspired to tell me misleading and wicked things, hoping the situation will change. So then, tell me the dream, and I will know that you can interpret it for me. The astrologers answered the king, There is no one on earth who can do what the king asks. No king, however great and mighty, has ever asked such a thing of any magician or enchanter or in astrologer. What the king asks is too difficult. No one can reveal it to the king except the gods, and they do not live among humans. This made the king so angry and furious that he ordered the ex execution of all the wise men of Babylon. So the decree was issued to put the wise men to death, and men were uh, sent to look for Daniel and his friends to put them to death. When Ariok, the commander of the king's guard, had gone out to put to death the wise men of Babylon, Daniel spoke to him with wisdom and tact. He asked the king's officer, Why did the king ensue such a harsh decree? Antioch then explained the matter to Daniel. At this, Daniel went into the king and asked him for time so that he might interpret the dream for him. Then Daniel returned to his house and explained the matter to his friends, Hananiah, Amiah, Mishael, and Azariah. He urged them to plead for mercy from God of heaven concerning this mystery. So he and his friends might not be executed with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. But during the night, the mystery was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven and said, Praise be to the name of God for ever and ever. Wisdom and power are his. He changes time and seasons. He disposes kings and rises up others. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the discerning. He reveals deep and hidden things. He knows what lies in darkness, and light dwells with him. 
I think and praise you, God, of my ancestors. You have given me wisdom and power. You have made known to me what we asked of you. You have made known to us the dream of the king. Daniel interprets the dream. Daniel 2, 24. Then Daniel went to Anok, whom the king had appointed to execute the wise men of Babylon, and said to him, Do not execute the wise men of Babylon. Take me to the king, and I will interpret his dream for him. Antioch took Daniel to the king at once, and said, I have found a man, the exiles from Judea, whom can tell you, the king, what his dream means. The king asked Daniel, also called Belshazzar, Are you able to tell me what I saw in my dream and interpret it? Daniel replied, No wise man, enchanters, magicians, or deliverers can explain the king the mystery he has asked about, but there is a God in heaven who reveals mysteries. He has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in days to come. Your dream and the visions that passed through your mind as you were lying in bed are these. As your majesty was lying, there was, there you, my, your mind turned to things to come, and they revealed, the revealer of mysteries showed you what is going to happen. As for me, this mystery has been revealed to me, not because I have greater wisdom than anyone else alive, but so that your majesty may know the interpretation and that you may understand what went through your mind. Your majesty looked, and there before you stood a large statue, an enormous dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and armors of silvers, its belly and things of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of black baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out by not, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a thrashing floor in the summer. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. This was the dream, and uh, now we will interpret it to the king. Your majesty, you are the king of kings. The God of heaven has given you dominion and power and might and glory. In your hands he has placed all mankind and the beasts of the field and the birds in the sky. Wherever they live, he has made you ruler over them all. You are the head of gold. After you, another kingdom will arise inferior to yours. Next, a third kingdom, one of bronze, will rule over the whole earth. Finally, there will be a fourth kingdom, strong as iron, for iron breaks and smashes everything. And as iron breaks things to pieces, so it will crush the bre crush and break all the others. Just as you saw that the feet and toes were partly of baked clay and partly of iron, so this will be divided a divided kingdom. Yet it will have some of the strength of iron in it, even as you saw iron mixed with clay. 
as the toes were partly iron and partly clay, so this kingdom will be partly strong and partly brittle. And just as you saw the iron mixed with baked clay, so the people will be mixture and will not remain united any more than iron mixes with clay. In the times of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom that will never be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush all those kingdoms and bring them to an end, but it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of the visions of the rock cut out of a mountain, but but not by human hands. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze clay, the silver, and the gold to pieces. The great God has shown the king what will take place in the future. The dream is to be true and is interpreted. interpretation is trustworthy. The king Nebuchadnezzar fell prostrate before Daniel and paid him honor and ordered that an offering and in and incense be presented to him. The king said to Daniel, Surely your God is the God of gods and the Lord of kings and a revealer of mysteries, for you were able to reveal this mystery. And then the king placed Daniel in a high position and lavished many gifts on him. He made him ruler over the entire province of Babylon and placed him in charge of all the wise men. Moreover, at Daniel's request, the king appointed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, administers over the province of Babylon, while Daniel himself remained at the royal court. Okay, that was Daniel 1 and 2. And now we will turn to 1 John 4. 1 John 4. Turning, 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 turning. On denying... And I am denying the incarnation. On denying the incarnation. Let's see here. See if we can't get into a different position here. <laughs> ah. Okay, here we go. John, 1 John 4. Dear friends, do not be believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone in, out into the world. This is how you can recognize the Spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus Christ is not from God. This is the spirit of the anarchist, which you have heard is coming, and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them, because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world, and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God, and whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. God's love is ours. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. 
This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that he might live through him. This is love, not that he loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him, and he is in us. He has given us of his spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. And anyone acknowledges that Jesus, and if anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us there this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. And there you have it. That was John 4, 1 John 4. Which brings us to the end of the Bible with Frisco 2020 for today. Tomorrow we'll be reading Daniel 3 through 4 and 1 John 5. Father, I just want to thank you for your word, because without your word, I could not be the messenger of your word. So, in Jesus' mighty name, I pray, amen. And they all said, amen. All right, that's it for me. This here has been the Bible with Briscoe 2020, with your messenger of the word of God, Shenandoah Briscoe. I've enjoyed being your messenger of the word of God. And as always, you know, God loves you and so do I. So come back and see me tomorrow because, well, I'll be here and I hope that you are too.